Hello, everyone. I am Zoe Schwind, and earlier nice. this week, the community was treated to some massive news regarding too. Overwatch 2. Of course, the of biggest that. announcement by far was the news that Overwatch 2 will arrive on October the 4th as an always-on, always-evolving life service game that will be free to play for everyone. Now, if you're like me, you're eager to learn more. And that is why I'm here today at the Blizzard campus to better understand the decisions behind the announcements, find out what they mean for the players, and with some luck, uncover a few new game details for you at home. And be sure to stay tuned for the world premiere of the new cinematic, The Wastelander, which was teased just a few days ago. Let's go. So with that, let's get into it. Woo! Bing bing bong. Bing bing bing. Joining me are Overwatch game director Aaron Keller and production director Paul Hale. First, how are you two doing? I'm doing great. Excited. Yes, me too. <laughs> so excited to be talking about this. And okay. I'm so excited to have that's, you both here. Now, uh, there was a ton of news which dropped over the weekend, and the community has been buzzing. And I'm excited to be able to sit down with you two now to unpack all of this for everyone watching at home. Now, the biggest announcement had to be the news that Overwatch 2 is releasing on October 4th as a free-to-play live service. That's incredible, and that must be very, very exciting for you and your team. Yeah, Overwatch 2, it's been a labor of love for our, our team. We're all dedicated to creating a game that our community will enjoy for years to come. We also want players to feel like there was always something new for them to play or experience in the game. These goals really led us down the path of developing Overwatch 2 as an always-on living game. One that continues to evolve and expand. Free to play live service, can you drops, imagine? Nine week seasonal model, robust content play, roadmap, long after new hero on. every other season. We're lucky I was to reading! Have such a passionate and creative set of players. And we know that they've been craving more ways to play the game they love so much. In recent years, we haven't done a good enough job at delivering that for our fans, and we feel their frustration. We took a hard look at our strategy for Overwatch 2 to make sure that. We could deliver new heroes, new Jump maps, queen, I saw her. modes, and more to the community on a frequent basis. Hey, listen, if the maps basis. are like new Queen Street, keep them out As of the game. As an Overwatch fan, of course, that's music to my ears. We know that's the community's top priority, and we feel like we have the right approach to be able to deliver that for them well into the future. How are you and the team planning to deliver on that promise? Uh, well, the very first step is getting the game into everyone's hands, and that's going to happen on October 4th when we transition Overwatch 1 October 4th. and invite every PC and console player to drop in and experience Overwatch 2's reimagined PvP experience. And that's just the beginning. Our plan is to deliver a steady drumbeat of new content every nine weeks through free seasonal updates, ensuring that there's always something new to play, chase, unlock in Overwatch 2. Well, that all sounds amazing, and it's so much of it, too. And now, I am sure everyone at home wants to hear more details. Of course, uh, I'd be happy to share a look at the road ahead. Our journey is going to begin on October 4th, when Overwatch 2 releases free to play. Three new this heroes, includes six new... Three new heroes, six new maps, a brand new mode, and more. The new heroes include Mythic Sojourn, skin? What is a mythic skin? Junker Queen, and a brand new support hero that we'll reveal in the months ahead. Our new maps will take players across the globe to iconic locations. Portugal. Our new PvP mode called Push will challenge teams in new and exciting ways. Players will also be able to unlock new cosmetic items through the in-game store and Battle Pass. Battle Pass! He said it! As well as complete weekly challenges and experience the start of Competitive Play 2.0. And of course, everyone will also be able to access the revamped heroes, PvP maps, and fan favorite game modes from the first Overwatch game. Fan favorite? Our they next season will arrive in early December, new where we will tank, introduce a new map. tank hero, along with a new map. New mythic skin, we'll new battle pass, 30 new skins. To earn and unlock, and an all new battle pass, and also in the in-game store. And in 2023, we'll continue to release a new season new every heroes, nine weeks, maps, with either a new hero, new, skins, new map, PvE or new mode. Begins. Players will get the chance to earn okay. more themed yeah. content, complete weekly challenges, access new battle passes, and more. Wow. There will always be something new to play.
In 2023, we'll also begin releasing our new PVE experiences, which we're really excited about. We're really looking forward to being able to share more with the community as we get closer to releasing them. I know we've seen more and more games shift towards that free-to-play model in recent years, and it really does seem like players have taken a liking to it, especially shooter fans. Um, did that have an impact on deciding to make Overwatch 2 uh, go free-to-play? Honestly, not really. For us, free-to-play games offer a lot of advantages. From the very start, True. Overwatch was designed to be a social experience. We have a heroes of experience? different roles, and they all rely on each other in, in order to accomplish their objectives in the game. So it requires a lot of social teamwork. Social experiment? We also see that outside of our game, within our community, with fan art, cosplay, and the Overwatch League. We know our fans are having the most fun when they're playing with their friends or meeting new ones. And the move to free to play makes it easy Overwatch for everyone the to most just drop in, play motherfuck. the game, join the community, whether they own Overwatch One or not. And with Overwatch Two crossplay enabled, people can play together no matter what platform they prefer to play on. It's always been a game that stood for inclusivity and community. When they see the roster of heroes, we want them to feel like there's someone there that they can feel connected to because oh, I see the Queen, I see universe her. is and always will be a place for everyone. And we feel like we have an incredible opportunity. This is so pre-recorded. No! I can't wait for really? October when this incredible journey will begin for all of us. Now that we have a better understanding of what's to come, I'd love to dive a little deeper, uh, starting with Overwatch 2's new approach to PvP. Can you maybe elaborate and explain a little more? Sure. PvP has always been at the heart of the Overwatch experience, and we've made some tweaks to it over the years, but Overwatch 2 really gave us the opportunity <laughs> to put the mode under a microscope. And we really wanted players to feel that they had more impact in a match. And we've made significant fundamental changes that we just couldn't do in the current live game. This was a foundational shift that changed everything. Heroes, maps, and more. So we had to reevaluate every aspect of PvP to ensure we got it right. We've been encouraged by player feedback from the first beta, and we will continue to make updates and improvements in the game. Well, earlier today, I had a chance to sit down with a few additional members of the Overwatch team and hear more about all the work they're doing Jeff's to really back. find PvP in Overwatch 2. So, let's take a look. It's gonna be Jeff Kaplan. One of the things that gets us up in the morning, happy to work on Overwatch, it's first and foremost a really special game, the way we portray a bright future. Everyone on the team is really proud of it. We're bringing in all new oh, PvP Brie. experience. We're transforming she from 6 to, to a 5v5. Changed a lot of how we design heroes and actually how we balance them as well. We had to go back and look at all the heroes and all the tanks especially and make sure that everyone fits and works really well in this new paradigm. This newfound importance on each individual player to feel like they can really make an impact on the game. We're trying to obviously maintain the original character's identity and overall silhouette, colors, statements but also kind of bring something a little bit new. We can make balance adjustments really quick, Matthew. as fast as our design team sees that there's an issue. Jeff Goodman and the rest of the hero design team have been loving all the feedback coming in. They have tons of awesome ideas about uh, how to change or uh, adjust balance. So heroes like Arissa got a, a major rework. We're looking at how many barriers are in place. You think about Overwatch, you think of these really protective shields. But we're looking at it from the perspective of, you know, what shields. if she didn't have that? What would that even look like? We're just always looking for great opportunities to change for the better. I'm really excited about how we've refreshed uh, all the maps. I think we've done a lot of great changes, especially for PvP. A lot of our old stuff just looks gorgeous now. We've done a lot with the art and with lighting and shadows mm. and just made stuff pop a little bit more. We also added some options with like daytime, nighttime. I think all of the Overwatch 2 maps are custom recorded in the actual place. We've hired a field recorder to actually go capture ambience of the real world location. We realize it's a huh. subtle detail, but those are the things that really make these maps come to life. We have done a pass playing all the old maps in 5v5 and adjusting things for that kind of setup, whether it's moving cover Touched around grass. just a little bit or tweaking a door. In the beta, we're listening to feedback, so we're going to improve each map based on what the players have been seeing. We've been working on these for a little while now, and we're really excited about it. 
We were really happy with the positive feedback once people were able to play it, and I think it was an important Developer milestone for us to get it in players' hands. Competitive play is a different thing to a lot of different people. And we really didn't think we were providing enough tools and measures to actually help players out if they did want to improve. We're reworking our scoreboard to provide more information uh, to players as they're like, playing through the match. But then once they finish the match, 40 HP. we're actually going to provide an after action report. So you can look at the report while you're in queue. You could actually go into uh, your history section and look, we want to work towards providing you with information that will help you improve your game. We've been getting feedback from a lot of different areas, from our you know, community team, like streamers, influencers. We've also been getting a lot of feedback from Overwatch League players. We do want to actually provide a bit of like feeling of progression. So one of the other changes we're making alongside that is not making your skill rating quite so granular. Right now, it's a very hard number. Instead of a numeric skill rating, we're adding these skill tiers within the larger ones. If you see someone uh, it's like at a really one, high two, skill three, tier, four. you know that that person is not just that good of an Overwatch player, but they've earned it. One of the cool things about Overwatch 2 is it has this new push game mode and maps along with it. Push is a PvP game mode on several different new maps. We've been playing it in the beta, Push. and we've actually All been right. using it in Overwatch League as well. Right. And once we started playtesting it, it was kind of an instant hit. There's a level, it? it has one path that goes what all the way it? through it from one base to the other, and in the middle is TS1. And he's this lovable robot with a pair of barricades next to him. What are they and the players them? are essentially fighting for control, and if they take control by taking out the other enemy team, TS1 T will move TS1. a barricade towards the enemy Bye. base. To win, you His either get Jason. that barricade all the way to the enemy base, or after a certain amount of time, did you move your barricade farther than the enemy team did? It's a very fair game mode. I think the maps are great. It provides for a lot of different like locations where a lot of great fights can happen. We developed a lot of engine upgrades in the game, so this allows us to do faster iteration. This was a huge effort by our engine team to allow the art team to build faster, more detailed environments in a shorter amount of time. You will get to experience the game world. We wanted to feel much more immersive. Reaper. Overwatch 2 is a dream for audio features. It's everything we've ever really wanted to do. We, we really go into every little bit of detail, trying to find uh, a Treasure way that every blinks. sound will cut through. When we started on Overwatch 1, we were really, really focused on the headphone mix. We, we thought for, you know, a PC-first kind of game, we realized that people listen to Overwatch in all types of different places. So now we support home theater Dolby Atmos in the game. Dolby now Atmos? Now consoles offer all kinds of Jungle new Queen. things too, like 3D audio that we're supporting. There's new voice lines, new conversations between all of the favorite heroes. And we have so many, there'll be more that'll just come to the game over time. We've written 25,000 voice lines for Overwatch 2. Holy shit, 25,000? So, tons of new thousand? features. And the reality is that Overwatch scales even beyond that, all the way up to giant sports arenas for our Overwatch finals. Everything you like about Overwatch, you're gonna get that in Overwatch 2, but even more. You know, we're really listening to that feedback. A lot of it we felt like, man, we really think this is going to be super fun. We just need people to be able to play it. October 4th is really just the beginning. I mean, just amazing work by the entire team. And I personally can't wait to finally get my hands on the full PvP experience when Overwatch 2 goes live this October. And October is just the start. As Paul mentioned earlier, Overwatch 2 will continue to evolve and grow over time. But what does that mean for us, the players? Well, I went behind the scenes to talk with the team working on new seasonal content and find out more. So let's take a closer look at what players can expect when Overwatch 2 expands post-launch. Okay, so the roadmap. Let We're me see really the roadmap. We're really excited because people will just be able to just fully immerse yourself in the maps and the storylines and the heroes. With the new seasonal model, we'll be able to drop a ton of content in very frequently as we're updating the game through these big seasonal drops. We're looking at releasing heroes every other season and then a map in between those. And on top of that, we're looking at dropping a ton of content involving skins and other great goodies for players to get their hands on for each seasonal drop. We have so much that we want to do in Overwatch to develop this game 
because we think it's the next step for us. We think there is so much more we can bring. I'm really happy moving to our new seasonal based schedule, making this really huge commitment to regular updates. It's exciting. Regular the updates, they claim. I know what this team can do. We really want players to be able to anticipate when things are going to enter the game. With all the new content and events coming in, it's even more important to just make sure that everybody knows what's coming. And along with the free-to-play change, we're doing away with loot boxes entirely. We have a oh. new battle pass model coming in, and we have store as well, so the players will have a lot more control about how they no interact loot boxes. The game and how they acquire new content. We've been working on so many things over the past couple of years. I'm most excited for folks to see some of the new heroes that we've been kind of cooking up. It's a bunch of different reasons why we choose to make a hero. We're trying to follow the narrative, pick the hero that makes sense, or do we need to create a hero that answers this mana, counters a certain strategy that's too strong in a game? We've got Did two that more supports just get pulled and towards another the Junker tank Queen? in just the first couple of seasons. You see and that? we're still working on new characters for a year, year and a half down the line as well. There's characters that folks have already seen glimpses of in the story, and there's also characters that you've never seen before, never heard about. We were looking at making sure the new heroes fit within this new, very fast-paced paradigm and less shields and crowd control. You can see a lot of that reflected in team play moments, but with a much faster pace vibe. Boom, 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 boom. We want to push the sci-fi, the futuristic feeling of maps. There's a touch of sci-fi everywhere you look. So this is something that was a little bit more subtle in Overwatch 1. We really want players to feel that the world takes place in not so distant future. Coming up next is Rio. Rio, Rio! Uh, PVP map. Pretty sure everybody's gonna love that one as well. It's a great map. It's close to the team. Many people on the team are from Brazil, so it was kind of fun to inject the culture, the colors, the vibe into this map. There's a map that takes place in Portugal. This map is pretty close to the team because our lead environment artist is from Portugal. Ah. People from the location should really get a sense that we've done a ton of research and we were very inspired, and I think we captured it pretty beautifully in the game. It is a push map, one of the newest game modes, and we tried some pretty interesting layouts for this one, so we hope the players like it. We definitely want the game to feel like a globe-trotting adventure. <laughs> There's new types of content from what you're used to in Overwatch 1. We have charms, charms. we have banners. Banners. The current Mythic skin that's in the works that I worked on actually is for Genji. He's Ooh. got this kind of cyberpunk Japanese demonic theme. Ooh. Mythic skins are meant to be this next tier of skins above legendary. We want players to be able to go in there and pick and choose certain pieces meant to be this extra awesome legendary skin. Oh, that so you can, can customize. customize it. We're concurrently developing quite a few mythic skins. They're going to be released over the seasons. All this amazing stuff, all of the amazing skins. For weapon charms, really what we're looking for there is just for the players to express themselves and dress their character up. One of our core tenets on Overwatch visually is to focus a lot on the first person view. We want you to be able to see it and enjoy it while you're playing the game. One thing that was really important to us was to make sure that players, if they earn anything in the game anywhere, that they're able to use it everywhere. So if you earn something on console or on PC or on Overwatch 1, you can always use it in anywhere in Overwatch 2 as well. And with ah. each new season, there'll be a ton of new content and a new battle pass Cross as well. progression. These seasonal updates will allow us to be constantly infusing the game with new content, new heroes, new maps. So the game is going to feel fresh just all the time. There's always going to be something for you to do or to work towards. There's never going to be a point where you're like, gosh, I don't have anything to do. Being able to provide players with new heroes every so often, new maps. It is going to be a growing and evolving Wait, game. Wait, so what's going to happen so in my loot boxes? To explore I have 2,000. Get what's going to happen it's in Overwatch 2? It's going to be really exciting, really fun. If, they're, if they don't with exist. both PvP and PvE, there's <laughs> going to be really great content for you to immerse yourself in and continue to play over and over again with your friends. We can't wait for October 4th. We're just excited to be back. Nice. I mean, it's so great to see how much thought and care your team is pouring into uh, really elevating the game through post-launch season. So, you mentioned that PvE is coming in 2023. Now, can you tell us how Ooh. the development is going and why the team is committed it's in to hell. bringing <laughs> these type of experiences into Overwatch? We're all so invested in the world of Overwatch and, and the heroes that live in it. And through the years, we've developed cinematics, animated shorts, and graphic novels for our players who just want to get deeper into the lore. With PvE, we have an opportunity to go a step further, to go deeper into diverse storytelling in ways that we really just haven't been able to before. So 
We are planning to expand she the asked Overwatch universe how it's going through these seasons it. that we just described, oh, and God. we will start delivering this PVE gameplay in 2023. PVE will be delivered through the live service, oh. and that means we'll be able to deliver and tell more Overwatch stories and create more opportunities to experience our heroes. Here's a sneak peek at what we're working on. Oh. The team's goal for PVE in Overwatch 2 is to basically move the overall story of Overwatch 4. We've told a lot of short stories along the way. There are a lot of to be continues. It's time for us to answer those questions, close off some of those stories, ask new questions. So the new game will definitely move the overall canon of the Overwatch lore 4? of Overwatch 4. Wait, what? Get those doors open! For the PvP live service for something? certain seasons, what? you're also going to get some PvE maps. You said You'll forward. be fighting Null Sector and at least some of the maps. They've come back and they're mad, so it's Overwatch's job to take them out. There's going to be content for you to immerse yourself in you and continue weird. to play over and over again. A lot of the older guys from the original Overwatch team, they're coming back but they need help with some of the younger generation like Brigitte and Lucio. So we're going to tell the story of how Overwatch basically gets back together. Another thing we want to do with uh, the Does story is to showcase Overwatch more of where the back? characters are from. For example, Torbjorn is from Gothenburg. Players will get a chance to see what Torbjorn's factory looks like. Oh you my can God. play PvE with your friends and immerse yourself Ooh, in the world and cool. stay inside of it a little bit longer. Wow, this is incredible. It's so great to get that first sneak peek. So thank you so much for sharing that. Before I let you run off, is there anything you would like to say to the community watching? Yeah, we are so excited for today. And we're so excited for you all to be able to see everything that we want to show you. And we really cannot wait for October 4th when we're all playing this game together. Neither can I. Now, we'll also take a deeper look at a brand new hero. That's right, Junker Queen, who will be playable for the first time during the beta later this month already. Now, before we do that, though, we thought we'd take a look at Junker Queen's origin story to get to know the next great Overwatch character a little better. Paul, Aaron, we appreciate you spending some time with us today. Best of luck to you and, of course, your entire team as you gear up Is this for the that cinematic? launch. Let's take a look. No, wait, did we already see this? One, two, three, four! She's a colossus, born from the sand, rise above a station and born to command. Her fans and in the app actually fall through a vine. Hunts the barrel on the and wreck them like a crime. This is the legend of the Duck and Queen. Watch your back, see the hurt. I can't understand Australian people. Well, I know sacrifice and I know pain. On Mixed Mutants Raiders, many I'd slay. Junkirk Town is my domain. And when I'm done, none of this will remain. There will be a reckoning. of reckoning wow just wow what an unbelievable new hero and we will dive deeper into jungle queen but first i wanted to introduce art director dion rogers and a few new faces to the show we have narrative designer miranda moyer and cinematic director ben die thank you guys so much ben for joining Dye. welcome yeah thank you for yeah, having us yeah. here i'm really excited to share this it takes an army to create a game. <laughs> I mean, the effort is clearly paying off. That short was just so much fun to watch. Now, it's been such an exciting week for everyone watching, but I'm sure for you three as well. Uh, players have learned that the next beta is coming on June 28th. Can you tell me a little bit more about what Twelve we days. can expect to see in this beta? The biggest thing is open the console players this time. We're going to add a new map, Rio. Junker Queen will be playable finally. 
So this should be pretty fun. I mean, I personally can't wait to get my hands on Jungkook Queen, and you're representing her right there with the cool shirt as yeah. well. Uh, what a great segue. So let's talk more about the newest Overwatch hero. I think it's super exciting. I know everybody has been really anticipating this character for a long time. She's been super prominent in our lore ever since the Junkertown map came out, and I think people have really been looking forward to finally getting to experience everything that she has to offer. What makes Junko Queen so unique? And why do you think the Overwatch players will love her? So Junko Queen is interesting. Usually when we start a character, we do a bunch of drawings and, and we have a little story. But she was kind of born out of the Junkertown map. We started to create this map that was associated with Roadhog and Junkrat. This narrative started Ash. to appear where they've been kicked out of the city. And so we're like, who kicked them out? And we're like, well, maybe there's some sort of leader. So we had the kind of Junkertown decree that you can see in the level. And then over time, it kind of developed that it was a queen. During the short, we're actually developing her personality. She's full of attitude. You know, that's what we love about her is um, she, attitude, she's really, huh? really strong. So she's very recognizable. And obviously, the lore behind her um, is very interesting. So some <laughs> of that potentially can bounce off what the, the game design will be. It's great to hear that it's just such a collaboration with the Overwatch team. Yeah, this is, this is a fun part about working together. Uh, the Overwatch universe, it's filled with memorable heroes. And as you said yourself, Ben, it does take a village of dedicated developers to really bring each one of those to life, but in a meaningful way. So let's take a deeper look at the making of Junker Queen. Okay, here we go. Here we go. When we started on Junker Queen, first we have to decide what kind of role she's gonna take. So. Uh, she's a tank. She's a really aggressive tank. You know, we didn't want her to be kind of a Reinhardt style, stay back and guard her, her well, team. My Ryan's she's aggressive. got this very ferocious nature, and we you. wanted for that to be represented in her gameplay as well. Personally, what I'm most excited about Junker Queen is just her big axe, you know, just to be able to her swing big that thing around axe. is awesome. It's always great to have some sort of anchor point to make sure we really incorporate this axe into her abilities. Her Secondary, we call Jagged Blade. If you do your quick melee attack, she will kind of swing with the blade instead of a normal punch. Um, it does a little bit of extra damage and creates a wound on the enemy. So she Ooh. can throw the blade as her secondary fire, and it's really a great ah. sort of skill shot to be able to land on the enemy, especially like a moving enemy if you can land it. And so you after throw you throw it, it, it sticks to them. She'll recall it, and it, the force of recalling it, ah. um, if it's stuck into somebody, will actually pull them forward. So she can actually kind of pull people to herself if you can manage to stick that blade into somebody. For Jerker Queen's ultimate, we have an ability called Rampage. She creates this kind of whirlwind of magnetized metal, including her weapons and it whirls around her and then she dashes forward and you try to go through as many enemies as possible and tag them all up. That also wounds everybody, which is really important because it, it's very easy to hit them with this large area effect, so it heals you for a lot, but also it creates a debuff on the enemies that reduces the healing that they receive to zero. Our sound designer has done an incredible job with her. She's full like of they said snarky fun to the way she plays. It heals you a lot. So and they showed a clip kit, of her ulting while she was anti guitar healed. sounds actually hidden. So if you listen to her axe, <laughs> she pulls it out and there's a big screech on the guitar strings and she pulls it forward. We have a wonderful actor named Leah who we found after a huge global search trying to find the right voice for her. Here I am. It's really amazing when the right actor matches the character and the personality you feel this sort of magic that comes out of it. I think players are gonna love her. She's scary, she's awesome. She's a departure from any other hero oh, so that they we have here. Her you know, ult reduces healing to zero? Did so I hear that right? And I'm just so glad to get her in people's hands finally. The queen of Junkertown has arrived. So how does the Junker Queen fit into the overall world of Overwatch? I think Junker Queen's pretty interesting because there have been previous rulers of Junkertown. Uh, Junker Queen was not always the queen. And the old rulers of Junkertown have always been kind of content to just, you know, lord over the city. But Junker Queen, she has a very big axe and big ideas to go <laughs> along with it. Very big ass. What did you aim uh, to achieve when developing Junker Queen? We want to tell deeper stories for our heroes, and have the heroes that are connected to the world of the game. Big thing for Overwatch 2 is to move the lore of Overwatch along, so these type of heroes help with that. What are her abilities, and how do those abilities actually make her successful? Were you not paying attention, season? Zoe? Did What's you pretty awesome it? about this hero, she was developed when 5v5 from the start. She was never a part of the 6v6 world of Overwatch. Knowing she's the only tank on the team, what abilities that will help bolster the team. She has this commanding shout. It boosts the speed and armor of the heroes around her. So oh. especially you need to push through a choke. She does the shout. All the speed. players hear it. They move forward. First she has hero a bunch to of introduce weapons, speed? You know? She 
I think she named Since one Lucio? of her weapons, right? Yeah, she, her, her knife that she throws and pulls back is named Gracie. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> a lot of her abilities kind of drain on the heroes and gives her health back. Her ultimate, basically, it shoots you forward and you do this whirlwind with her axe. Oh, that that's does a lot of healing. Bit, like Holy a big anti on everybody yeah. around you. So she's very aggressive and, and people are going to have a ton of fun playing it. And are there anties? any particular maps uh, you feel that Jungle Queen plays really well on? Getting close is where she's pretty dangerous. So maps that have a n nice flank routes allow her to get in closer to the enemy and, and start to do her. What she does best is reckoning. So another big piece of news over the weekend that got the Overwatch community just buzzing uh, with excitement uh, was, of course, the tease of your new cinematic trailer, The Wastelander, uh, which we're going to premiere here in just a few moments. Oh, but before shit. we do, uh, Ben, can you tell us a little bit more about it? I remember in the, in the very beginning of our story room jam sections, there's talk about what type of story we want to tell, right? Uh, should we include Junkrat? Should we include Rohawk? But ultimately, I think we wanted to center focus our on focus on, on yeah. Junk, exactly, on our main character. It's a character reveal. It's potentially a sort of a revenge origin story, you know? Actually give a little bit more lore into Junker Town, how she become the queen, how was that society uh, being governed society. You know, prior to, to she become the queen? Well, you and the team, you guys pour so much love and time into these cinematics and into these heroes that it really shines through. Mm. I want to thank all three of you for taking the time to sit down with me today and sharing all of this amazing information. Yes, yeah, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> I know the fans at home are on the edges of their seats so am I, waiting to see it. So let's take a look at the world premiere of the Overwatch 2's new cinematic, The Wastelander, featuring the latest hero, Jungle Queen. Here we go! Take them out with the rest of the garbage. Let the wasteland deal with them. I'm not allowed to have a bad dream. He's talking to the camera. No wastelander has ever made it to the reckoning before. It's a jump rat. <laughs> but here I am. A free for all. Zero rules. And the survivor gets the throne. Mason Howell. Welcome back, Junkertown. King Howell has never lost. Not in 13 years of rule. On the battlefield. <laughs> Not until today. The reckoning begins in five, four, three, two, one! Did you really think this would be a fair fight? You don't survive the reckoning unless the winner grants your mercy. That's why I've got to win this whole thing. Damn, she's getting fucking pummeled. Let's get this started. <laughs> ah, scavengers like you ain't so bad. <laughs> Man, really? I wanted his head chopped off. Speaking of, come on, big boy. Off target, is mine. 
G'day, Mary. What are you smiling about? If you're smart enough to run the Tinkers, why are you working for this strong guy? Aha. Not you be any better. At least I won't shoot my friends in the back. No way. Wait, isn't this in the spawn room? I just realized. Wastelander scum. Just die! Because we're stronger than you. You haven't had a real fight. In 13 years, we have done every bloody day! I am the king. I am everyone here! Not in this arena. Oh shit, is she ulting? Jump right! What the? This meathead has a bigger magnet? Damn. Uh. <laughs> that could have gone better. Do it. Mercy, you showed my family 13 years ago. Get out of my city. <gasps> you. Yeah! Junker Queen! <laughs> they reused his laugh voice line! Well, that turned out alright, didn't it? But now they're probably wondering what sort of changes I'll make around here. Well, buckler. They're about to find out. This is the legend of the Chaka Queen! Watch your back, see the hurt machine! Fuck the world to seven days! To burn down with currency! Damn, like I got tossed. wraps things up for today here at Blizzard. I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in and make sure to follow Play Overwatch on social for all the latest news and announcements about Overwatch 2. And I can't wait to see you all in game. All right, so what do you guys think? Do you think you'll get a special skin on the battle pass? Escort Hanamura? Busan? Busan's a hybrid? 
the fat support players shafted again, but hey, we got Why does it say the which fat? Which I'm sure will look awesome on Moira and Sigma Clueless. The fat? Look at the times. Oh, wait, yeah, they're all 1357, huh? Watch the NPC closely. No, there's going to be content for you. You to immerse yourself My in and four, continue weird. to play over and over. No, there's going to be content. Claire? Content for Who the you fuck to is immerse Claire? You. There's going. No, there's going to be content. No, there's going to be content for. Does she you. headbutt the robot? Going to be. What the fuck is that? There's going to be content. Be. Uh, there's... Oh, look at her feet! What is going on here? There's going... What the to fuck is she doing? Content for you to... You asked for seven new heroes at launch, but got three? Yeah... I don't know how I feel about three new heroes at launch. I mean, they did say they're going to be cranking out heroes, like more frequently but but hmm. and by three they mean one because sojourn Smart. and Jungkook will be played by them three new heroes does that include sojourn i'm assuming three new heroes i mean they said they, they literally said sojourn Junker Queen, and a new mysterious support hero. They said every other season they would release a new hero? Is that what they said? I thought they said every... They, I thought they said nine-week seasons. And they would release one. Every other season? The action begins October 4th. Smart. Free to play live service, seasonal model, PvP reimagined. Okay, 5v5, whatever. Cross progression, PvE experiences beginning in 2023. Okay, I guess, okay, th th this is twice now they specifically use the warning PvE begins. Does that mean it's not even going to be ready by the time they release it? That's, that's the second time they deliberately use the word PvE beginning. Or PvE begins. Or, like, maybe they'll just, like, add stuff over time? Smart. They're gonna release new things and updates? I'm still confused about the gun charms. Are they just gonna put it on Moira's nails? Sigma gets a fancy new bracelet. <laughs> I guess. I don't understand feels dank man. Oh, I don't know, dude. Smart. They love using protective words when they release any news. Three new heroes, six new maps. Okay, so what are the six new maps? New Queen Street, Coliseo, Portugal, Rio, Midtown, and Circuit Royal? 30 plus new skins, new battle pass, new mythic. The mythic skin looked cool. Oh yeah, they reset the season. I mean, that makes sense because it's a new game. Just cause everyone is asking. How do we get that second beta? How am I supposed to know? Do I work for Blizzard? First look at the all new cosmetics coming to Overwatch 2. Check out the, an all new tier of hero skins. Mythic. Cyber Demon Genji. This does look cool. I will admit. This looks pretty sick. You can customize it too. Weapon inspections. Smart. Wicked. Thumbs up, thumbs down. It looks like an NFT. Smart. What in the fu- oh, well. Huh? Did they not- What is going on? What is this cylinder? <laughs> oh, wait, yeah, my face is covering this. What in the fuck is that? It's the boom mic. <laughs> And they fucking show the developer console. Oh my god, of course. Now now they put it top of... Oh my god. I 
can see this dude's fucking taskbar. What time is it for him? What time is this guy working? What does that say? 5.53 p.m.? This is from 2021? <laughs> what is going on? Okay. Banners. Well, I'm not going to be signing up. Because I believe I'm going to be getting access regardless. So I won't be signing up. Look at the FAC for it. Where's the FAC? Do I get- Do I need to opt in for the next beta even I opted in for the first? <laughs> yes, all players need to opt in for the next beta regardless of their opt-in status from the first beta. Smart. I had access to the first Overwatch 2 PvP beta while I automatically roll over to the next beta. Beta access does not roll over. For the upcoming beta, our main goal is to test our console and crossplay capabilities as well as we scale up server testing slowly. Because of this, we need to select players based in part on their platform choice, so we're launching a new opt-in process which tracks player platform preference. Art. Get immediate access to the Overwatch 2 beta. Oh, so if you buy this, you get the Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh Huh? You had the beta before, do you still have it? Uh, it doesn't seem like it. It says beta access does not roll over. I need to opt you need to opt into the next beta regardless. Um You know, I'm going to be honest. I really feel like this next beta had to have been a support play. Like I'm excited for Junker Queen. I'm going to have a lot of fun playing her. But I feel like unless they make some big changes to support, this next beta had to have been a support. I mean, I still think Jungle Queen's cool, and she's hot, and she has, like, Smart. nice abs or whatever. Beta but beta get some I think support players needed a bone here. You know? Complain. The battle, pa battle pass right. is fine. The People complaining about battle passes are stupid. Sustainable. P People that complain about battle passes are dumb. It's literally all purely cosmetics. You don't you don't need the battle pass. Ba battle passes are always a good idea for game devs, because of the, it, it's usually not pay to win shit. It, you're not buying power. You're just buying skins and cosmetics. People that complain about battle passes are dumb. You don't have to buy it. The game's still free. Like what? Do, like what do you want? You want like a free to play game that has no money? That has no every anything like, like no monetization at all. Obviously, that'd be nice, but that's not how it works, you know? Especially not for a giga company like Blizzard, who needs to make money. Smart. Also, you said zero profitability for the devs? The devs aren't going to be the people that are making money from the battle passes, <laughs> which sucks. But they aren't the ones making the money from the battle passes. That's all going to the fucking suits, baby. 